right, folks, I'm David, and welcome back to the Coachable Coaching Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm here with uh, Louise Buchanan. She's been a guest on this podcast in the past. Uh, actually, Louise came up with a really cool idea to have leadership quick fixes as a podcast episode. So that's what we're going to go through today. And we're going to go through different questions from different viewers, but also that uh, Louise has aggregated over the years, as well as myself. So that is what we're going to go through. Louise, uh, you're, you're from an HR background from the financial services sector, right? So you've, you've seen a lot of these leadership problems and leadership questions come over the years, right? All right. How about we go through one of our questions today? Sound cool? Okay. Uh, here's a question. How critical is customer knowledge or knowledge of our customers for a leader? And what strategies can be employed to maintain a strong customer focus in a tech-driven environment? Yeah. We talked about, uh, it just came up naturally. I think we talked about the customer uh, in one of our previous podcasts. And I think if everyone, no matter where they were, you were saying operations in, in that question, and I agree with that. No matter where you work, if your eyes are on the same customer um, and how to you know help that customer, then it's probably not the value add work that you want it to be. And so if you don't touch the customer with your job, so you're not you know, seeing the customer as part of your job, it's important for you to understand the customer regardless. And so there's, mm -hmm. you know, ways to go about that, that we can talk about. But if, if you're, if you're helping an organization, especially on technology, you're always helping an organization be more effective, right? For the mm -hmm. customers. But if you don't even understand the customer, how, how are you, how do you know you're coming up with great solutions, right? Yeah. You know, years ago, actually, I worked in in a company that shall remain unnamed, where I was new at this organization too. I was the new kid, and someone who's been working there for a while, like they had a, I don't know, they had some guest come in or some consultant, and they popped into my office and said, "Hey, Dave." I go, "Yeah." And they're 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 senior to me. I go, "Hey, here's so and so." They just asked me the question, what our company does. Can you describe to them what we do? And yeah, I know. And this person, I think they worked, you know, be, you know, behind the scenes, back office, but they were at the company years before I was. And, you know, and I'm the, I'm, I don't know, two weeks in or something like that. And I just rattled things off, right? It probably made no sense, but at least like, you know, I had some idea. I was customer facing, so I, I knew what was going on. And, and, but that, that's exactly what you're saying, like. It's actually kind of embarrassing, isn't it? If you've been at a company for so long and regardless of your role, it's like, hey, what, what's your company do? And you can't answer that question. Like, how, how can you not? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm how, thinking... how can you not know what the company does? Like, are you ob oblivious? Like, you know, what, what do you do? Yeah. And I, like, I just heard, uh, you know, through my other roles, like people working in engineering or the architecture groups, they could see... If they shared information, wait, if you're working on that for them, but we're working on this for them, and those two platforms aren't going to talk to each other, then maybe this isn't a good idea, right? And yeah. so, but if you don't know the customer, you can't really make those connections, right? And so the value it brings is, is humongous. Yeah, yeah. But back to the, like, the, I think the, the, to this question was like, it, is it, is it important? to understand your customers and absolutely. And this, like, as you're saying, Louise, like regardless of where you are in the organization, you need to understand because all your actions inform, should inform you like, is, is this good for the customer that the, the organization I belong to? Is it good for them? And yeah. then that should be your North star, right? That should be, that your, should North be your North star. Yeah. What are, but what are some other ways you, you can invent to know the customer? Go visit them. Um, you might not be it, it, customer facing, but if you are in a customer facing role, even there, like depending on where, where you sit and what, you know, if are you in a customer support role or versus like pure sales role, it, it, it is a different capacity. You need to make an effort and, you know, I say effort, you need to make effort to go 
visit the customer. If that's not your primary job, right? Like if it's your primary job, like it's easy. <laughs> it, that's easy. That is your job. But if it's not your primary job, you you need to make an effort to find an opportunity, whether it's at a, you know, one of your company's conferences, right? Man a booth, right? Um, or, or just go there and chat with customers. Or there, there's there's sometimes like in some of these bigger conferences that your your com company holds. I've seen people in, on the operation side at my company conference, they actually will make an effort to sign up to, you know, um, like even at the info booth to speak with customers, but oh, great. they make an effort and you have to make an effort to go see them. And quite frankly, if you're, you're not primarily customer facing and you love it, love customer facing, go in the customer facing role, yeah. right? That's yeah. okay. But yeah, I, I, so it's, it is effort you need to make. That's the same thing with leaders. It's too easy and it, um, to be just bogged down by all the, you know, political BS and, you know, depending on the organization or the administrative BS <laughs> that comes with it. I call it BS because it's, it's necessary, by the way. And it's not really BS. It's necessary for a business to run, middle managers especially. You need to deal with all those things so that the business can run effectively, so that you can service your customer better. But um, you need to make an effort. Right, make an yeah. effort to to go see see a customer in whatever way that's possible. And, yeah, uh, one of the funnest things I did was I went to uh, to a branch one day that I set up for the day. Just sat there doing my job, and mm -hmm. then the manager invited me to sit in on some customer. Like, yeah, ask the customer first. So I spent you know part of my day doing like job shadowing, right? And I think that's yeah. another great thing. Like, Find someone who is doing the job with a customer and call them up and mm -hmm. job shadow. Yeah, and I, I, I think a lot of a lot of managers are very supportive of that too. Uh, like the more more you see as an individual, the more effective you actually are. Actually, one of the funnest part of my my, my job when uh, when I was at IC was actually like working with different customers. Like it was almost like consulting, and you actually job shadow a lot of these individuals. Oh wow! Well. Right? It, it was it was actually fun. Right, like I'd be, you know, in the back of the car and, you know, rolling along with the customers as they're seeing customers. I would, you know, see their customers with them, right, to see yeah. how they work. So that was that was pretty cool. That was a fun part of the job. That um, sounds fun. My customer's customer. All yeah. right, let's go to another question here. You ready? We're on the okay. last one, right? It could be the last one for today. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Question. Conflict management is a challenging aspect of my job as a leader. Can you share some techniques for e effectively managing and resolving conflicts within a team and organization? Does HR ever deal with that, Louise? My goodness. Conflicts? Yeah. Well, and you know what? You could be the most experienced leader like, like yourself and conflict is still hard to do, right? Conflict yes. management. There's... It's, it doesn't become way easier ahead the more experience you have. And that's because a conflict is because of people. And when people are looking at something differently, right? Um, and so trying to get to a solution that gets you back on track is, is tricky. And it's going to be different every time. Yeah. I find conflict is, is tough. It could be tough. It, it's, it's tough, especially like with, it's with people like you know and you need to work with yeah and clearly there's like a, a difference in you know incentives difference in personalities and expectations of they expect you to do x but you're like no i do y yeah. right and that's where a lot of conflict comes in i find yeah i i don't even know what to say to this one this this one gives me the shivers because it no matter how much <laughs> You deal with conflict. It, it's it's never easy, but it is like I, I find it helps when you 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 try to cooperate with with folks. You know, like uh, you know, you reach across the aisle, and I, that's where like we talked about this many times. Like understanding what matters to that person, right? Like I work with a lot of people where it's it's about the customer and the about the revenue growth, and so I, I, I do my best to speak in their language. How this why my, how my actions helps actually helps them in that the pursuit of gaining more revenue and making their customers successful right 
And by the way, if it doesn't pass that sniff test with myself, then I'm probably BSing myself and <laughs> creating the problem. So I, I found like that as a tactic that has helped, right? If I know what matters to the other person and how they're incented, I work to speak in their language. Someone, uh, someone on my podcast recently said, uh, you know, when it comes to negotiating, right? There was this uh, Thomas Kilman model, like five quadrants. Oh, and yeah. I go, okay. I was like, okay, you've been, this person, like they, they, they train, they have like ex hostage negotiators and everything. This is what they do for a living is profile people and then teach you to negotiate. So that's what this person was. That podcast is going to be released in the next uh, couple of days. But uh, at the end of the podcast, I asked them, this name is Joanne. I go, so you've been profiling me this whole time. How do you, what's my, how do you categorize me? And how do you think I negotiate? And she's like, you know, I think when push comes to shove, you are, you work to be cooperative. And I'm like, okay, I should tell my wife that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, but also just knowing when to, and I can't remember the other quadrant. Cooperative is the ultimate win-win, right? But also knowing when to be assertive, right? Like there's assertive, and assertive is actually not necessarily a good thing in negotiation, right? That's like, you know, if you're super assertive, it's like winner take all, cutthroat, I win, Louise, you lose. Karma, karma will come back and haunt me there, right? Yeah, if, okay. if I make you lose, right? So nevertheless, there's how can we cooperate? How do I speak your language to help you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah. That that constructive conversation is so important. So I love what you're saying around speaking their language, right? Saying it in a way that's meaningful to them. And the only way you can do that is building those relationships, right? And and hopefully getting a bit of trust. Um, the best thing you can do is talk it through. Like what what are what's our end goal? Is the end goal the same? And if it is, then talk through like, okay, how are we gonna get through this? this conflict to help us both get to this end result. Yeah. All right. Anything, uh, anything else you'd like to say about this challenge and this question? No, this isn't a fun one. Let's, let's, let's end this one. <laughs> oh, we're going to end this. Well, that's our questions for the day. Um, I just want to wrap this up. Uh, that's a, you know, this is part of our, our new series in the coachful coaching leadership podcast. All right, Louise, any, anything else you'd like to say to the audience out there? Yeah. Have fun. Hope this was helpful information for you. All right. All right. Well, folks, thank you very much for listening. Thanks, Louise. Thanks. Bye.